Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some new discoveries and new announcements in regards to what seems to be the strangest asteroid in the entire solar system. And we're talking about just one asteroid out of like billions and billions out there. The asteroid you sort of see right here, known as Phaethon. Or technically 3200 Phaethon. The asteroid that we've known about for quite a long time, since 1983 and the asteroid that has been imaged many times by different missions, but one that's even sort of difficult to refer to as an asteroid, and the one that seems to actually possess a lot of very unusual features. And recently the scientists identified something else super strange about this rock. And so let's talk a little bit more about these discoveries and what the scientists now think is happening to this unusual object. And here it all starts with a discovery that tried to resolve one of the ancient mysteries. The mysteries for Geminids the Geminid meteor shower that usually happens sometime in late November to early December. And if you actually look at what causes Geminids, it's basically these tiny particles that seem to orbit in this way. Now, if you were to actually look at the orbit, it seems to almost directly coincide with another object discovered in 1983. Spoiler alert, this object. The asteroid that's approximately 6 kilometers in size, and that, like a lot of other comets and similar objects, over time it seems to have released quite a lot of various particles, which basically orbit in this way, but once in a while cross the orbit of planet Earth, which usually happens around the same time in late November. And that's when we see the Geminis. So, so far so good, so far no mystery, nothing to be explained, and all of this has been seen before, with basically all of the meteor showers explained in a similar way. But as the scientists kept studying this unusual rock, they started to discover unusual properties. First of all, this really looked more like a typical rock, a typical asteroid, as opposed to a typical comet. For this reason, the scientists even proposed a new type of an object, possibly referred to as active asteroids or rock comets. In the last few years, quite a few of these have been identified, but they're really not as common as a lot of other objects. Technically, asteroid Bano is one as well, and is probably one of the more famous ones. And in essence, these are objects that are, unlike comets, predominantly made out of rock, or silicates but they tend to exhibit cometary properties. This is of course the famous image from the double asteroid redirect test that turned the moon Dimorphos into a cometary object. And so normally, asteroids, which are mostly rocky, don't really have cometary tails, especially as they approach the sun. Whereas comets, by nature of having ice on the inside, will usually form long tails as the sun vaporizes their surface. But it was only in 2009 that NASA finally spotted a short tail coming from Phaethon as well, suggesting that this asteroid was also technically a comet. And in this case it seems to have happened because this object approaches the Sun really closely. Every 524 days it approaches the Sun at 0.14 astronomical units, which obviously causes it to have some extreme heating on the surface and thus turns this rock into some kind of a cometary object. And up until 2018, Pretty much all of this made quite a lot of sense. I mean, it was a little bit different, but not super different. But then, in 2018, new observations revealed something else. The first observation here was that the tail was just a little bit too long. Way longer than it should be, assuming that this is what's happening here. And so the scientists started to wonder if maybe this is not a typical dust that we see from comets, but maybe something entirely different. On top of this, around the same time, another study discovered something else about the surface of this strange object. This asteroid was not the same color as everything else. It was actually blue. It was the only blue asteroid known to us. And that was really weird. It was really difficult to explain. I've actually discussed this back in the days when it was just discovered. But even now the scientists are not entirely clear why the surface here is so different. Then, more recently, the scientists studying the rotation of this object discovered that it also seems to be speeding up its rotation much more than any other asteroid in the solar system as well. A typical rotation here is 3.6 hours, but this was decreasing by 4 milliseconds every single year, which was also kind of difficult to explain, but in this case the culprit was probably the Sun. Normally, the solar pressure is the main source of a lot of changes in various asteroids through various effects such as the Yarkovsky effect we've discussed before. There should be a video in the description. But even here, the actual effects were just a little bit too high. Once again, something weird, something unexplained, and something unusual was happening with this rock. So maybe it had something to do with its color. I mean, the fact that it's blue and the only blue rock known to us, with asteroids usually being either gray or red in color, could have been a potential explanation. But obviously nobody knew exactly what was going on. 
And now we have even more unusual observations from another study. Once again, in regards to its emissions, which once again don't seem to make a lot of sense. Because the scientists were wondering what exactly is coming from the surface here, especially because the tail is way too long and the rotation is changing too fast, they wanted to actually see what's in this tail. Is it possible that this is actually made from something entirely different compared to other comets? Can it be maybe not dust? Now normally, when the scientists study various comets and look at them using various filters, they usually glow very brightly in various frequencies produced by various particles. For example, some filters are able to see the dust, other filters are able to see sodium, which is normally emitted very close to the sun. Actually, a while ago, I even talked about this unusual tail that you can kind of see right here, and this is not really a comet. This is a sodium tail produced by mercury through the interaction with the sun. So a lot of stuff seems to emit this. But when the scientists behind the study you can find any description took a look at this object using SOHO spacecraft, the one that's supposed to be watching the sun, they discovered something they didn't expect. First of all, a sodium tail. Second of all, no dust tail. This was actually seen during 18 different approaches between 97 and 2022, with the observations here suggesting that the tail itself is produced by sodium, not so much by anything else. Which to the scientists first of all explains why this object becomes cometary and why it becomes so bright, but does not explain one thing. It doesn't explain the lack of dust tail, which supposedly produced geminids sometime in the past. And in this case, geminids are produced by various dust particles, which were supposedly released by an object in the same orbit as Phaethon. And so if this blue asteroid is not responsible for shedding all of this dust, it's unclear where the geminids are coming from. Well, there is one obvious explanation, but there's no confirmation yet. All this might have been created by some kind of an object that was disrupted thousands of years ago, breaking apart creating Phaethon, but also all of these dust particles as well. But this would of course create a new mystery. What could possibly do this? What could actually break a much larger object, potentially a comet, into a piece of an asteroid and into tiny dust particles? And so when considering all of these discoveries, this actually paints a very intriguing picture. At the moment we have no idea what exactly this object is, how to classify it, and how to explain all of these unusual observations, because there's nothing like it anywhere else. But luckily for us, the Japanese Space Agency is going to be launching a mission specifically for this rock. The mission known as Destiny Plus, which stands for Demonstration and Experiment of Space Technology for Interplanetary Voyage with Phaethon Flyby and Dust Science. It's supposed to be launched in 2024, and so by possibly 2028, we might have some initial answers and even pictures of what exactly is happening here and what this strange object actually looks like. I mean, we might have first pictures of an actual blue asteroid, which I'm sure is going to look really weird, especially in space. And in terms of this particular paper, it's actually intriguing that they were able to discover all of this by using solar-based spacecraft that were never meant to study asteroids, specifically SOHO and STEREO. But anyway, until these future discoveries, we're still left with a bit of a new mystery in regards to the origin of geminids, which is now once again uncertain, and of course, what the surface of this unusual object potentially looks like. Previous studies have suggested that it might resemble some kind of a dry mud on planet Earth, mostly because of its super close approach to the sun and because of all of these emissions from within it that would make the surface look somewhat dry and somewhat cracked. And so that Japanese mission will hopefully either prove or disprove this. Nevertheless, still a pretty intriguing object, an object that I'm sure we'll be discussing more as the scientists discover even more mysteries about it, and because it's also what's known as a potentially hazardous asteroid, mostly because it crosses the orbit of planet Earth, it's very likely going to be studied for many years to come, especially because of its unusual changes caused by the sun. But for now, that's pretty much it. Check out previous videos in the description below, Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.